And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So there's Zacchaeus up in that tree, and Jesus says to Zacchaeus, believe in me. And then Zacchaeus gets baptized, and there's all this ceremony, all this religious stuff. This guy comes with his big funny hat and blesses him, and right? No, none of that's there. Jesus looks up and he says, here's your invitation, host me. And then look at what the text said. So he hurried and he came down and he received him joyfully. He welcomed Jesus. He received him joyfully as a host. Look at those words that are in this passage. We've, we've read them already. Guest and received and stay. They're all there in the passage. And I think that what that means is that Jesus came and lived with Zacchaeus for a while. Now, I know I've titled this about being a, about a meal with Jesus, but it's far more than that, but not less. You see, in the ancient Near Eastern culture, a meal with somebody is the most intimate portion that you can, that you can share of your family life with an outsider. To share your table is the most intimate thing you can do for your guest. But what's important about all of this is that, yes, okay, maybe there's some time missing between verse 7 and verse 8. I'm sure there is. I don't know how long Jesus stayed with Zacchaeus. But what's important for us to note is that Jesus is actually showing us the order of grace in this passage. In theological terms, we call this the ordo salutis. You have to actually pass a test on this from seminary. They ask you this question. What is your ordo salutis? And you have to lay out the steps. So this is how Jesus' order of grace works out, his order of salvation for Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus says, I'm going to stop cheating people. And then Jesus says, oh, okay, now I'll come home with you. No. Again, Jesus says, I'm coming home with you. I'm inserting myself in your life. Zacchaeus has not repented yet. Are you seeing that? It's right there in the passage. It's not my opinion. So we tend to think Zacchaeus should have repented first and then invited Jesus into his heart and then Jesus could go home with him. But guess what? That's not how it's done. Jesus invites himself into Zacchaeus' life before the repentance happened. I probably just gave someone in the room vertigo. Let's calm yourself, steady. Let's rewind even further in this passage, and, and, and maybe it'll help us to release some of this tension. You see, Jesus doesn't force himself on anyone. Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus. He worked at finding him. He had to get over himself, right? He had to get over his position. He had to get over the crowd just in order to see Jesus. And when you do this, this is what both the Old Testament and the New Testament both affirm. Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And this is what we see in the narrative. Where are you, Jesus? I just want to see you. And Jesus says, you found me. Now let's spend some time together. Before there's any commitment from Zacchaeus, his commitment was, I just want to see you. In spite of your flaws, Jesus says, in spite of your record, in spite of your collaboration, in spite of your extortion, I'm coming to spend time with you. I'm giving you myself now. Wow. I mean, do you really understand? You don't deserve the honor of Jesus dining with you. What's going to be your response if you understand that in your life? Joy. So he hurried down and came and received him joyfully. What? The, the rabbi, I mean, maybe that's how we thought of him at the time, wants to have dinner with me, wants to stay at my house. <laughs> I can't believe my luck. I just thought I'd get a glimpse of him. And then it says in verse 8, Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, and again, there may be time missing between verse 7 and verse 8. We don't know. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. Behold, Lord. Don't, go by, go, don't bypass that too fast. 
This is an amazing statement. Because of what Jesus has done, Zacchaeus' allegiances have completely changed. Remember, he works for the Romans. In order to work for the Romans, he had to say, Caesar is Lord. That's the only way he gets that contract. His allegiances have completely changed. Behold, Lord Jesus. His allegiances have changed. Grace has gone through Zacchaeus like a lightning bolt. And Zacchaeus says, because you love me, I want to change. Please note that I did not say, I'll change so that you love me. That's not what happens here. The love of Jesus creates the dynamic for the change. The change is the result of the love. It's not what merits the love. So when Zacchaeus says, oh, I'm going to give away half of everything to the poor and I'm going to pay everybody back whom I've cheated, Jesus does not say, now salvation will come to you. No, instead he says, today salvation has come to this house since he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. And Jesus is saying, this is a sign that salvation has come already. Repentance. Repentance comes as a sign of salvation after belief because God's grace changes you. Don't you see? Jesus invites himself into the most intimate areas of our lives. I must stay with you. I'm not going to be treated as some disposable piece of garbage. I must stay with you, says Jesus. This is how grace works. I want every single nook and cranny of your life to be affected by my grace. And that's what happens here. The gospel invades where Zacchaeus lives, not just physically, but in his heart. It's intimate. When Jesus says in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. He's not just saying, I want you to believe in me. He's saying, I want to come into the most personal of venues of your life. I want to, I want to invade all of your personal values. The most important daily rhythms of your life, I want you to work out the implications of the gospel into every nook and cranny that make you who you are. And I want you to invite me into that. And I'm going to change everything. Everything. The way you spend your money, your thought life, your sex life, your family life, your vocation, your friendships, how you spend your time. Everything will be affected by the gospel when you really understand the implications of what my grace is doing for you. And grace takes hold of Zacchaeus' life and it changes him way more than obedience to laws ever could. Well, what do I base that on? Well, the law commands a tithe of 10% of your income. Zacchaeus says, I'll give 50%. The law says in Numbers chapter 5 that if you cheated somebody, you have to pay them back the amount that you cheated them plus 20%. Zacchaeus says, 400% will do. 400%. When Zacchaeus took Jesus home, it changed how he thought about all of what he had previously valued. Jesus isn't a nice addition onto what you're already doing. He changes it. Zacchaeus is not just doing what's, re what's required. He's responding to grace. And the gospel has sent him on an adventure, and he began to be thinking about the implications of the grace that he's been given. And since it was no burden at, him at all to give 10%, then why not give more? Look, if you, if you want the salvation of Jesus Christ flowing through your life, you have to not just see him on Sunday. You have to bring him home. Into the very center of your life, give him access to every single part of your life. Have you? This is the Christian life. Digging out the rot and letting him work on it. For all of us, me too. Maybe I'm too transparent. Maybe that's my problem. I keep sharing with you. I've got issues. You're like, no, no, we want a pastor that's got it all figured out. Eh, it's not me. We need to let him change us. This is the wonder of Christmas. 
This is why we find so much joy in Christmas. Jesus came to earth before you repented. He was born in a manger, and on the cross, he was forsaken by the Father for your sins, which you hadn't even committed yet, much less repented of. This is why if you seek him, he'll find you, because he's been looking for you all along. He's not looking for a crowd. He's looking for those who seek him. And then he'll invite you to host him. No matter what you are, no matter what you've done, and he's going to say to you, I want to come home with you. And if you take Jesus home, his salvation can flow through your life. Have you sought him with your whole heart? Have you looked for him? And will you invite him home? That's my question to you today. If you haven't done that, I invite you to do that. There is no more great joy than that, to experience the salvation of grace in your life, to experience the release of not having to be enough, no matter what end of the spectrum you're on, that's what we're all battling, is to be enough. When you experience grace, you're free, and it puts you on an adventure that you'll never get off of. It's great.